Hello, Vishy. Uh, good to have you here. Uh, almost a year ago, we were uh, at the Vaka celebrations uh, in Bangalore. And mm -hmm. uh, now one year has passed and I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the journey of Vaka and the players in this one year from September 22 to 23. Yes, excellent idea. As, as we both uh, know and uh, you have followed a lot as well, uh, lots and lots to talk about, right? Lots of developments. So uh, let's try and see if we can capture some of that through their games. Sure. So we'll look at their games. Uh, this was one of the pictures from from last year uh, on mm -hmm. uh, where those celebrations happened. And uh, I took uh, each of the mentee and I tried to find uh, how they have been doing with their uh, some of their achievements. So uh, mm -hmm. firstly, uh, Gukesh. And uh, I think he, he has gained uh, 32 ELO points from 27-26 last September to now mm -hmm. 2758. He made his debut in first super tournament. He was joined first at WR Masters in Dusseldorf. Uh, he won the Menorca Open. Then he play, was third place in Sharjah, third place in Norway Chess, won Speed Chess Junior Championship, fifth place at Super uh, United Rapid and Blitz and quarterfinals at World Cup. So this was his kind of one year uh, that he achieved. Yes, um, obviously captured within that is the uh, fact that he is now uh, number eight in the world. Yes. In fact, he was brief. He was number seven till he lost to Magnus because he was even ahead of uh, Anish. But Correct. Um, after that uh, loss, he fell back in. But uh, and we can repeat it again: thirty-seven year old <laughs> record. So uh, I was not going to not ask some... that here. I mean, no, no, but not to not to just. Uh, <laughs> You know, sail past it, but uh, that is a big uh, sure thing. So. Yeah, and also like from all these achievements that he has done uh, in the last one year, which one would you pick out as your favorite? Because, you know, finishing first in WR Masters, also third place at Norway Chess, which was a very strong event, uh, then uh, quarterfinals at World Cup. W which one would you pick out as your favorite for Gukesh? I think his performance in the World Cup brought him very close to the candidates. Mm. Uh, in a sense, he was uh, unlucky that he faced an inform Magnus one round too early. Right. Uh, if he had faced everyone who faced him after that qualified. So <laughs> uh, he was really unlucky to face him just one round before. Mm. Um, also, we see here his consistency. Right. You, uh, you mentioned WR and Norway, but He's playing open tournaments and gaining a rating even there, which is even harder. Yes. So then you see that uh, he's very, very consistent. Also good rapid and blitz results. So, I mean, he has bad ones and good ones, but, uh, you know, good performance in Zagreb, good performance in the speed championship. So uh, just very impressive. He seems to be well settled in his uh, current location, let's say. Right. Right. And you spoke about, uh, you know, him facing Magnus at the World Cup. And I felt like um, this game that he played against Magnus was very, very uh, interesting because from around about even position or even Magnus being better, he managed to outplay him uh, through, through the next few moves, which was actually quite uh, special in this game. And he, he brought his queen here and somehow, I, I mean, I was watching it live and I was very, very impressed uh, that he could get this position and in fact have winning chances with black pieces uh, uh, in, in, in a must-win game. Yes, it is one of the big problems when you are uh, white in the situation to play a normal game. Right. Because somewhere deep down, you half of you wants to liquidate and go home and half of you wants to keep playing normal chess and there's a conflict. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, Gokesh exploited that very well. You have to sense it on the other side. And even uh, his opening, he didn't do anything crazy. Uh, Magnus went for the Alapin. You right. can see that two rounds later against Prague, Magnus did the Alapin much more smoothly. Yes. Almost like he thing. But this one, um, 
Yes, he got some uh, chances. I, I think in the middle game, he played confidently, courageously. That's uh, it's something. It, next time he can do it without losing the first game, and then it'll be even better. <laughs> but <laughs> so it's, um, I think, good for his confidence that he was able to do this. Right, right. And I, I had chosen a couple of uh, games of Gukesh, which I uh, felt were uh, a little bit to his style and I just wanted to get your thoughts on them. Like this one was his victory over Andre Esipenko. And when mm -hmm. I was watching it live, it seemed like he was worse. Like the engines were saying plus minus at this point, uh, Gukesh is black. And then all of a sudden he plays after quite a long thing, this move, Knight G4. And uh, that move never crossed my head and somehow it it's like this Gukesh style of playing something completely weird. Yes, it's almost slightly computerish, mm. but it's uh, it's also very gukesh -ish. He uh, <laughs> he uh, <laughs> he will often find the moves which um, which are tactically justified, mm. and he will play these very aggressive moves. So, I myself may not spot my G four, though I may find it by elimination, you know. But I think. Uh, in, quite often in Gukesh's games, he goes for these very challenging, difficult moves because, um, uh, well, that's his style. Um, this takes a lot of tactical justification, yeah. but uh, I'll mention some of my own games with him and you'll see that again, he calculates very well and this is one of his strengths, so he must play to it. Right. Uh, clearly, the idea is he has to fight for the e5 square. Yes, and this is what White accomplished by playing ninety two. White is giving up a pawn just to fight, win that fight for the e five square. So Gokesh is raising the stakes, as it were. Right, and, and then he he managed to uh, win this game, yeah. which was which was very uh, pretty actually at the end. Mm -hmm. I I I remember that he gave back his his pawn and. Uh, completely tied Yeah, but up. hang on a second. Let's yeah. just go back a little bit here. Sure. Round about here, if you asked me, I would say probably White is winning. Because uh, just if you gave me, asked me to do an instant judgment, I would say White is winning. Somehow Knight Ted 6 G4 looks so strong. Right. Uh, so the question is, will we see that he was able to play Bishop D4? So the obvious question is, should White have started with uh, Rook D1? Instead of put the bishop on c5, yeah, the knight on f5, and can you play rook d1 here? And then, I mean, I've not checked this with an engine, so I'm going to just ad lib here. Yeah, uh, it seems to me that uh, there could be some 93 trick. Here. Yes, yes, I, I have an engine running here, so I can confirm. Uh, what yeah, is but that's the thing. I mean, Gukesh sees these kinds of moves, mm. and somehow it's uh, very much his nature. Um, and this works, yes. yes. So maybe yes, it maybe works. It's crazy, this, but uh, this is what he might have. Uh, of course, he would have seen this. Yes. Yeah. So G six is quite uh, forcing, and he solves the problem in this way. I mean, G six is quite uh, committal, hmm. but on the other hand, uh, it relieves the pressure in this way. So knight h six, king g seven. Uh, again, rook d one, knight e three. So now bishop d four. I don't know if why black can play knight e three here. Ah, instead of bishop d4, right? Yeah, it's also yes. possible to play. Queen or even, also. I don't know, knight e5 maybe. <laughs> Same idea. Oh, yes. But actually, both these moves are uh, giving advantage to black, but bishop d4 ah, really? is the best. Oh, so then this is where the greatest advantage is. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Bishop d4 is the best move, but knight e3, knight e5 both give black good positions. Ah, okay. So... so... And I think now he has solved his problem and he's also pawn up. Yes. And on top of that, that knight on g4, sometimes it can work, but without this bishop on the diagonal, it's not that powerful. So he kind of uh, solves this and moves along. Right. Right. A and you also mentioned a uh, couple of games that he played with you. Uh, and mm -hmm. maybe the first one we can have a look is the one where uh, he went for this very... Uh, I don't know if it was kind of forced for him to to take this on G. I mean, of course, it's a bad move. Uh, but at that point, when he played it, I'm sure it was not so clear, right? 
when he took on G7? When he did it, my first reaction was, I don't think I did anything wrong to, to deserve this. <laughs> You know, because I mean, in a sense, black has to make a mistake before this sort of move is possible. Right. And I was extremely surprised by this move. But in a way, it's not uh, the best surprise. Uh, sorry, it's not the best uh, surprise, uh, best way to surprise your opponent because black can take the bishop or resign. Black can move his bishop <laughs> back to c7 or resign. I mean, every move. Uh, that or resign becomes your choice. Your moves become much easier to play. Although okay, I, I did see this. I yes. did see knight g6, <laughs> queen hit six check. Correct. I know what you're thinking, Saga, <laughs> but I did see this. No, I knew you saw it. That's why you didn't play it, of course. <laughs> yeah, but maybe it works anyway. Maybe I can just go king h8 or something. I don't know if. Um, but you if know, this is, this is actually, I, I believe Gukesh saw this line because after f5, uh, knight. No, this knight e5, of course, f6 wins. But f5... Uh, Queen h4, maybe? I hear. Ah, oh, but then knight h5. Knight h5, sure. yeah. Yes, no, this doesn't work. So go back one second. Uh, is f5... Um, sorry, king h8, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and now f5. Um, maybe... Ah, I can't play knight d5. Yeah. Think uh, bishop e5, but then fg, fg at least. I mean, he's, he's bishop g6. Well. Yeah, I don't know if uh, somehow it holds queen e7 or something. Yes, I mean, uh, white is better here. So may maybe what you played was the only defense with f5, like at that point. Uh, yes, also it's blitz. So I just thought uh, this is the way to go play f5 and clear it up a bit. Right. So f5. f5. Rook f3, queen e8. Yes, queen e8, obviously. Hey, oh, all nice. your pieces are on the last track. Yeah, but the, that knight on a4 is not very impressive. Correct. Knight f6. And and uh, I think you managed to convert this quite uh, yeah. confidently because here. Oh, this was a nice discovery to make, and then it's over, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so this one uh, was uh, Gukesh uh, sacrificed a piece, but that did not work. But uh, there was this one more game. But uh, did you see this game against Magnus that he lost in Norway? It was yes. just like this. He was he he kept on raising. He first sacked something, then he sacked a queen. Then he still had a good position. The problem is he had to win that game, so he could not take any of the draws uh, the that I'm sure were game, available. Right? But uh, mm -hmm. yes, but in the end. Uh, it didn't work, but it shows again this uh, nature. I mean, just to queen c4 is. It's not obvious to me that you should not play queen c4, but instantly right. he probably went queen a2 and knight d7. It's very Gukesh. Hmm. And and actually, uh, Gukesh, I guess he felt that this is the best way. I mean, it was not even like he was settling for queen a2 because there was queen c4. Hmm. He felt this is the best way to play. So, I guess he he just thinks this way, right? Uh, yes. Hang on a second. Just go back one more. Yeah. Um, no, I'm wondering if it's sort of h3, some e6, e7 works, but it probably doesn't because rook e8 and then queen d4 check is there. Yes. Queen d4. And queen d4 check is there, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, probably it's not the best time to get into analyzing this, but anyway. But he, he <laughs> actually got a winning uh, position at some point here uh, in this game. Yes, but but these things almost, uh, the problem with miracles is uh, when they finally happen, you don't expect them to happen. Yeah, with E6. Yeah, true. Ah, okay. Beautiful, no? How many forks in the position? So, uh, so what were you analyzing? E6... Uh... Well, I saw rook a1. Yeah. Then suddenly I saw bishop c7 check. Correct. If king e7, bishop d6, you're losing because of all the stuff that's happening. Right. But if you go king e8, then very, very fast I was looking at some knight f6 check, king f8, and now e7 check. And if queen e7, bishop d6 forks, I mean wins, and if king e7, knight d5 wins. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very amazing. Amazing. 
Yeah, amazing stuff. But this is accidental. Uh, yes. Maybe Magnus made a mistake one or two moves before. Correct. But, you know, uh, it's a pity if uh, your brilliant play doesn't give you at least one beautiful shot. <laughs> true, true. And there's also this uh, very interesting thing that is uh, games between Prague and Gukesh whenever they happen. And at mm-hmm. least until now, whenever they have happened, somehow the trend has been apart from, uh, I mean, the last Blitz game that they played in Tata Steel, that Gukesh manages to somehow uh, create a lot of mess on the board, like uh, in this game. Um, yeah, somewhere uh, here in this game, like Rook G2 was played and I think Prag was better, like if he would have taken on E4, but uh, it led to some. Su- it was so complicated that he m- went queen e7 and Gukesh got an advantage with e5. Yes, I don't know how much of this is. Uh... First of all, Gukesh probably forgot his preparation mm. because the line is quite uh, forcing, and um, uh, but it shows. The danger of just knowing that a line is bad but not remembering why. Mm. I mean, everyone faces this memory problem, and uh, this is one more illustration that uh, if you just know the line is bad but you can't remember why, then it's very difficult to solve with the board sometimes. Correct. Um, I think rookie eight, knight g5 must be bad. So I've forgotten what is the problem with knight d4? You mean here, rookie? Ah, yeah. No, no, instead Enjoy. of rookie eight. 94, I'm wondering what's the problem. I think takes on d4 here. And f3 over. And queen c4. Uh-huh. What is this? If I take and king h8? Yeah, somehow it says bishop b4. Ah, it becomes... Uh... Or bishop e6. So, I mean, this one is maybe okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, I mean, when I was watching this game, I might have been in like even... Which date? What was the date? Uh, 25th of Jan. I no, no, I was back home. I was yeah. back home already. Um, when I was watching this game, I was thinking, yes, I know that black is better now, but sitting at home, but... <laughs> Uh, at the board, if I don't remember my idea, then it's uh, 50-50 at least. So, and that's how it worked out. Um, yes, so he played queen e7, e5, and then uh, yeah, from maybe Prague had one more chance. Ah, yes, there was one more, correct. Yeah. And still, by the way, to continue playing all this is not easy. So, yeah, here I think he sh- he could have taken on f4. I think that was the mm-hmm. main move. Sure. But again, it feels like you should be in trouble anyway. So it's hard to believe sometimes that you have to do this. Correct. Correct. But one of the things that Gukesh, because he calculates so well, I think he can also he's also able to convert winning games quite smoothly. That is true. Um, he is just um, not only is he calculating well; he is not missing opportunities. He is not usually surprised by unexpected opportunities. Mm. Uh, he is always always calculating at a high level. So, very good practical strength as well. Right, and one uh, last game, maybe uh, it was with you that he mm-hmm. played. Uh, this one was very interesting. It was building up like step by step and I thought he would sort of bring his rook to the center and so on. But he played this move c4 and kind of made the position wild. He has to because he's already worse uh-huh. or getting worse. And um, his problem is, to be honest, Half of me wanted to just make a draw at this point and play knight e7 and then just uh, exchange everything on d5 and uh, shake hands. Mm. Uh, and literally, that's what is going to happen. It's uh, it's just draw. But then I played d4 thinking that after bishop d2, I have rook e5 and this should be good for me. And he played rook d5, which was the only move there. 
Correct. And then I was, I started dreaming. I mean, CD5, 97, I saw some Queen D4, Knight takes D5. Right. Uh, and worst comes to worst. Um, white, I, then I was, I thought it's a pity that white will make a draw because of opposite color bishops, but I thought h5 pawn, I'm slightly better. So I was all this. But then the moment I played rook takes d5, c takes d5, 97, almost like a complete evaluation, I saw his eyes flicker to light. <laughs> and then I knew, my God, I missed something. And then I saw g4 and rook e1. In, but I saw his eyes first before I saw my, I think, and then I... And then I simply couldn't believe it. So I spent a few minutes trying to think uh, uh, maybe I'm uh, maybe there is still some defense and uh, something like that, mm. but it's too late. But how quickly he spotted it. He didn't even uh, hesitate. Just immediately he saw. Again, uh, he's just... Uh, maybe he's not the best example because yeah. uh, maybe it's too easy for him, but nonetheless, it, it is... Quite impressive that uh, he not, he just calculates so well. Amazing, yeah. After this, uh, he he was better and uh, he won. Um, In fact, if I could even play rook takes d5, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, and I should hold this quite comfortably. No, without bishop, without knight e7. Ah, you mean here? Well, I I can sack the exchange, or I can play knight e5 instead of uh, knight e7, and that should also be fine. Hmm. True. Because if queen d4, I think I have knight takes d3. And if d6, then I have to be a bit passive. But again, very good chances to hold. Mm. So something like this. Maybe, anyway. maybe 97, uh, you uh, had missed that g4 and rook c1 is, is coming. Yeah, in. somehow my king was never in danger in any line. Right. And I could right. not imagine a line where the king is suddenly in danger. So Correct. it all happened very fast, but uh, it was a big shock. Right, right. So that is uh, about Gukesh. Uh, we, I mean, he's he's done really well uh, in this year, and he's moving now uh, towards the uh, top. I mean, he's in top ten, and hopefully, he'll also make it to the candidates because there is Grand Swiss uh, and uh, maybe the sorry, uh, the Fide Circuit and this and the Grand Swiss. Yeah. yeah. So there are. I think he has op he has an opportunity in all the remaining spots here, which is. Uh, Rating, winner of FIDE circuit and Grand Swiss. <clears throat> yes. Highest rating for Jan 24. Um, I guess Hikaru's the yes. favorite. Yes, right now. Hikaru, because Hikaru, Fabi 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 so Hikaru is the favorite. Yeah. But it depends what the rating will be then. And also, everyone will play in Qatar. So that will change a lot of things. True. Qatar and Grand Swiss and also if mm. some will qualify through Grand Swiss then maybe this spot keeps going lower. Uh -huh. Keeps moving along, yeah, that's right. uh, true. Uh, and also I think uh, for Gukesh this year, I think his work with uh, Gajewski, which is uh, with Waka and you know, you've been working with Gajewski, uh, has been very, very useful uh, overall. I agree. I think uh, Gukesh has reached the stage where he needs um professional uh, uh second and uh, because the workload becomes too much and if you're going to play all these tournaments you need to work like this everyone else uh is working like this um and obviously i can recommend gaevsky from personal experience also <laughs> so uh, that is very nice and it's very good that westbridge uh could help this and also the number of people who work like Gajewski at the highest level are very few, right? In the chess world, uh, the number of people. So it's not at all easy for a, for a top player to, to find a second. Um, yes, Gajewski has a lot of experience as being um, a top second. He, in fact, that's been his primary role for the last decade or so. He... Uh, Obviously, continues playing on his own, but uh, mostly he's just a uh, top second and uh... right. Yeah. And then uh, moving to Prague, I think he had a great year. Uh, I I use this uh, live rating right now, which has gone up to two seven three six just yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's gained sixty points, won the Asian Continental Arjuna Award. Uh, third place behind Carlsen and Duda at Champions Chess Tour, beat Ding Liren, his first 2800 opponent, king of the tournament at Global Chess League, won the Geza Heteni Memorial, 
uh, and also finished at the finals uh, of the World Cup and qualified for candidate. So very impressive. Yes, huge uh, leap in performance. With um, Gokesh, it was more, the line was uh, more even. Hmm. With uh, Pragnananda, I think something has changed dramatically since May, May, June. And uh, in a way, it's normal. It happens that sometimes you work for a long time, you don't see the results immediately, and then suddenly you see the results. But um, his jump in strength is huge. And many of his old strengths, which are playing long end games and all, are still very useful. Yes. We saw this with Ding and many and uh, others, but now we see it also against Ceparino and Vitigo. He's winning these long end games, and that's uh, very impressive. Can we very quickly have a look at this game against Ceparino uh, that just happened yesterday? Uh, I mean, your sure. thought on. Um, yeah, so this one. I mean, this Bishop Endgame, which was reached, I, I don't know at what point did it become more interesting, but it looked drawish uh, throughout. Like, I mean, maybe White had small edge, but. Okay, let's go back all the way. And you maybe at some point you'll read out the move numbers because this is kind of important. Let's go much further back. Okay. Yeah, so somewhere here, ED5. This is move uh, 40 now. It is move 40. Just go back a second. Instead of bishop d6, can black play after ed5? Sorry, uh, yeah, ed no, queen d3, bishop d5, ed5. Mm. So the first thing is white is going to establish uh, a better bishop and permanently lock it in. So the question is, can black play b5 here? Then I don't know. If I go queen takes b5 and you play queen takes c2, suddenly it's messed up more chances for perpetual. Um, it's not so clean anymore for black, mm -hmm. for white. But if white plays... Uh, um, after b5. After b5, if white plays c4, right. then it's a difficult decision. I can play uh, a move like uh, a4, cb5, a3, and God knows what is happening. Right. It becomes very double-edged. Um, or I could play b takes a4. No, instead of a4, b takes c4. Sorry. Ah, b takes so c4. c4, right. Yeah, b takes c4. And then if you go queen c4, I can even go queen d8, because suddenly you're not creating pass pawn so easily. Correct. But queen c6, maybe I can go queen b8 to stop that. Uh, Instead of queen d8, even. So it's, um, and then play bishop d6, and I can say, I'm waiting, what are you, how are you going to make progress? Or I could play queen takes c4, d takes c4, a4. And this becomes very double edged mm. because I will have a very dangerous past a pawn, but you'll have these things. I think on balance, this is better for black than for white because if you go c5, already a3, and you're losing one that pawn. Right. Unless you go c6. Uh, and if a2, c7, no, a1 queen is checked, so you can't do that. So, uh, b5 would have been quite challenging, but it is the 40th move, that's why, yeah, yeah, that's another thing. But nothing wrong with what uh, Chaparinov did because after bishop d6, c4, um, it's not clear to me that white is actually better. In fact, when they get to the bishop ending, you will see. Yeah. So bishop c5, very clever. Basically, he's saying if you take, you will, your king doesn't have to, when it captures on a5, if white plays king takes a5, I'll play e4 and you cannot stop the pawn. Right. Essentially, if you go king a4, there is right. no six one. Right. Play. And um, in fact, even on king a4, I can play e4. So it doesn't even matter. So you don't even get to a5. So he steps back. Uh, one second, just uh, go back a second. Put the bishop back on c5 yeah. and the pawn on g g2. He goes king f7.
And White plays G4, right? Yes. And he, what did he play after that? Bishop E7. Bishop D2. And for me, the question was, um, yeah, just go one second. King G2. So, ah, was this move necessary for Black? It's take, quite an important take question. The pawn. Because if he doesn't do this, then White's king has to go to H4, whereupon I can disturb the White king in many ways. Hmm. And I don't know that uh, it's actually winning for White. But it's the point is, what Prague's learned here is what Magnus showed for many years, that uh, it doesn't matter if a position is uh, actually winning. You just keep playing it. Yes. And I think quite often Magnus doesn't know in advance whether it's winning. He just starts playing it and eventually there are possibilities. And uh, Prague is showing the skill in many games these days. Um, so what happens? He goes um, hedgy, hedgy. So then, yeah, by the way, just read the move number here. 44. 50th. 50th already. Ah, so the bishop move. Now go to about move 70. Absolutely nothing has happened. Right. But that's the beauty. You have to keep playing like this. And he never yeah. once wanted to stop and say, okay, I give up draw. He yeah. kept playing. Yeah. And that's the only reason he won this thing. So now see, he goes again. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to pin so that he can play f4. Right. And uh, Chepi is always Cheparino is always in time to stop that. So they go another I don't know God knows how many moves Bishop h4. So then he's he uh, cannot go King g5 because of Bishop e7 check. So he goes Bishop e1 King f6. That's his fortress. Then maybe another 20 moves later he would try with the Bishop on d8 and then again same thing. Uh, but and now finally Black went and played f4. Yeah. Because somewhere in this confusion, um, Black is in Zutzwang. He cannot play bishop c5 because then I go bishop, bishop d8 check in king g5. And king g5 is suddenly coming. And um, I, no, I've not stopped and looked what happened, where, which exactly the moment. Right, I did not use right. the computer. No, so but this one is this. with com And then suddenly you realize. But he, if you see that he got this bishop on d8 like five or six times before this, right? But somewhere Chepi got Chepino got confused and uh, walked into this uh, king g5 ring, and now he's forced to play f4, which is a horrible move to have to make. And suddenly Prague is winning right now. Correct. And uh, then it's over. Yeah, he comes back. I mean, again, I don't know how many moves he makes. <laughs> By the way, go go back a few moves. Uh, yeah. Now, why didn't Prag uh, play Bishop F2? Because now the pawn end game would be lost. Winning, exactly. Takes, takes, D6, King F6, D7, King E7, King F5 resigns. Right. Yeah, um, Bishop F2 would have won, yeah. But maybe he didn't see a way after bishop c7. So what did he do? He went bishop g5, still some of those ones. Ah, he did it like this. And okay, he could have done it on the previous move as well, d6. And he's forcing uh, the right pair of pawns off the board. But again, when you're winning, there is no hurry. That's always a rule Dvoretsky, for instance, used to say. When you're winning, there's no hurry. So he's winning. So what's the hurry to clinch this? Right. This surprised me that he played bishop takes f4. Uh, if he could, if he went bishop d6, isn't he two pawns up? Yeah. This this would have won right easily. Wait, hang on. Let's try to understand his reasoning. King c6 after bishop d6. King f4. Bishop takes c5. Takes takes and maybe this is a draw king e4 king b4 f4 king b3 f5 a4 f6 a3 f7 a2 so that's why he didn't uh, allow the, he didn't go for this oh. okay so instead he took on f4 
and he took here. Yes, so he gave the pawn, which he couldn't save in the long run, but he went bishop d2, so black has to go bishop b6. But maybe and there was just... another way, right, to go king c6 here and to then reach that same position instead of playing bishop take c5, because then his bishop might not have been as passive like in the game. But the problem, I'll tell you one sec. We get it here, but let's go back one or two moves. If you you might be king c6 might be a very good try actually. But then I can go king e6. And now take. And this end game, would it be any different with well, bishop d2 now. Yeah, and now can so I go king b5? Yeah. No, I'll just go f4, f5, f4. Ah, same thing. Yeah. No, but there should be a difference, right? With ah, okay. Ah, but if a4, then uh, Prague will no longer. Uh, he will every move he will block on e5 mm. before playing f6. Then block on e7 before something. You know, he will not right. uh, allow you to exchange the bishop for the pawn. What happened in the game? Um. So maybe this is also lost. Or maybe even king e4 is as good because king e4, bishop e3, check f4, f5, and again we are in the same position. So Right. But also we should not underestimate how difficult it has been for yeah. Ceparino. He probably at this point was already wondering where his position had gone. I had a good position, what happened? Uh, and your resistance always drops a bit to the end. Correct. So he took, and it's a cute uh, win how he does it. So just have a look. He's never giving the pawn when, uh, yeah, f4. Yeah. Now watch what he does. He goes king d5. And he's never playing f6. Uh, yeah, because take take an a4, right? a4, a3. Yes. But when the bishop is on a3, he can do it. Right. So you can just see what, what he does at the end of the game. He goes like this. Ah, he did you see what he did? He brought his king back, put the bishop on c3, then went back with the king. Hmm. Uh, so that f6 is not available. Then uh, now how will he switch to b2, a3, I'm wondering. Yeah. Ah, now he goes bishop f6 and bishop e7. And and this, like he, if he takes king takes, king b4, king e6, king b3, f6, a4, f7, a3. If a, a queen a2, queen f6, and yeah, queen a1. And stops it. So he couldn't yeah. take. So now he goes bishop e7. And after bishop c3, he goes bishop a3. And now f6, because uh, if I, now you can see if bishop f6, king f6, a4, b4, king c4, king somewhere strong, I don't know, f5. Uh, I mean, oh, just yeah. not to be yeah. some a1 check, but sure. it doesn't matter. King b3, b5, king a3, b6, king a2. Um, yeah, b7, a3, b8, queen check. Correct. The point is your king is too fast. So, because if the king can be on c2 and the pawn on a2, then it's a draw. Right, uh, right. So, you have to be a bit careful there. Wow. But, uh, I mean, what was this, 117 moves or something? Yes, yes. They played, uh, f6 was 114. Wow. <laughs> so... Again, new, 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 new prog. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is something that he is <clears throat> evolving, and I think that happens with every uh, young player, right? He keeps yes. uh, improving. Okay. Uh, she going to uh, Nihal, who is the third mentee of Waka. Very mm -hmm. stable rise. He's reached two six nine four, um, nearing twenty seven hundred. He won the Tata Steel Chess India Rapid 22, not 23. Uh, he won. He reached the second round of uh, third round of the World Cup and almost knocked out Nepo. But the most mm -hmm. interesting thing is that he played 51 classical games in the year, and he had only two losses in the entire last year. Yes, I believe that most, even most of the top players. Uh, um, just think Nihal is very, very difficult to beat. And uh, they almost uh, uh, think that it's not going to happen. In fact, I think one of the reasons uh, Jan made such a big fuss uh, over some touch move or uh, this thing was because he thought that uh, he didn't know how to beat Nihal and he was almost uh, frustrated a bit. Um, yeah. And with Nihal, I mean, uh, 
some of his games have been tremendous positionally. Like here is one game with MVL that he played mm-hmm. just two days ago. Um, yes. At the speed chess. And it's just a normal uh, opening that he always plays these uh, little sideline-ish variations. Yeah, but nowadays I think it's just mainline. <laughs> <laughs> and the queens got traded. So here and now he starts like putting pressure on c5, then bringing his king into the center, then pushing the knight yes, away. By the way, I think by, you can these games you can almost think of as um, model games. Um, how to gain space on the king side? Push. We'll see in a few moves. You can see. Yeah. So he has achieved his g5 plan, and then he will put the knight on f3, bishop on f4. Well, he does it like this. But the point is, uh, later on, you can get uh, white can get rook h1 and even attack on the h file. Yes. So yeah, knight g4 is very nice because it gives some f6 options. A lot of quiet moves, and in Nihal's games, if you don't pay attention, you may think, okay, nothing happened. But the moves are lethal. So <laughs> it's quite uh, good to observe that. Now there's a masterpiece coming. Watch. Rook a6, rook takes g7. Knight f6, trapping the rook. Watch this. <laughs> and now rook h8 is threatened. Yeah. But if you don't, uh, if you stop rook h8, bishop b6 is coming. <laughs> and mate bishop and, c5. <laughs> I mean... just ma- this game is magical, yeah? Yeah, it was just completely outplayed. And the thing is, he did it once again. Like there was one more such game that he played. And uh, just bringing that up. So here, similar and and this queen c2, <laughs> very interesting. And now this entire thing, like he got first pawn here, then yeah. knight. D2. By the way, this is a well-known structure that um, if you have the bishop on f4. Taking away the b8 square, then this plan knight b3, knight a5 is very dangerous. Correct. What we saw, what we will see in the game. Uh, and usually black is fighting quite hard to stop it. But you see, never he allows e5. e5. Go back one second. Uh, yes. So what did he, what was his last move? Bishop f5. Yeah. And the problem with bishop f5 is that uh, white immediately plays g4. So if knight b3, you would have gone e5. I would have gone e5 and then the problem is solved because Correct. I can defend it with rook b8 or rook c7. Correct. Uh, but Nihal doesn't let him do this. Um, and the problem for black is if he goes uh, g, h g, what he did in the game, and then if he plays e5 as an intermezzo, then I can play bishop takes e5. Something takes e5. And gf5 and I'm a whole pawn up. Mm. So you cannot get this. And after this g4 takes takes, then Maxim Poor has to go back to e6, which is horrible. And then b3 is also coming. And then you get the most, this one of the saddest positions I've ever seen for black, knight a4. <laughs> ah, no, in fact, he didn't even bother with it. But if he goes knight a4, b6, then black has no squares there, wow. simply. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> b5 is a clincher. Because uh, Nihal spotted that e7 is going, but... Of course, I don't even I don't know if it's a bullet game or no. It was it was five plus one. So ah, it was five plus one. Yeah. But what a game! Yeah, so that very nicely played. Yeah. You know, so, would you say that uh, Nihal's play uh, reminds you a bit about Karpov's play? Or uh, Nihal's play is even more specific. Karpov, um, I remember masterpieces like this, but they were always in open, uh, open uh, openings. Hmm. Uh, Nihal is very, very good in these close setups and very alert to the very sensitive. Also, just like Gokhe, she's very sensitive to tactical mistakes. Nihal is very good with uh, these opportunities. You can find uh, many model games here. Like he likes to play these. this one game uh, which you had pointed out between him and Prague from the Global Chess League. Yes. So if we look at this, again, you see Rook C2, Queen B4. But I think Prague tried too hard here because now Nihal is getting into his setups. Takes takes Bishop A1. He'll put one knight on F4, just everything great. And White must be almost winning here. Uh, but then uh, Nihal got a bit confused and uh, messed it up. Right. And then in the end, uh, it was still, I think, uh, winning for Nihal, but uh, Prague was in great form in that event, I think. Yes. So some 
Crux C2, yeah. Queen A1 check. Incidentally, instead of, uh, if instead of queen c3, maybe you could go queen c1. Mm. Ah, but then queen d4, and then it's still uh, something to play for. I thought queen a3, but then queen into e4 is still there. Anyway, he went uh, queen c3, queen b1, king g2. And I think f3 might be, well, with hindsight, it was uh, not ideal because he could play some bishop e2 instead. Yeah, right. And uh, it's not clear how black is going to escape. So I will play h4, h5, all sorts of nice plans I have. Mm. But anyway, he went f3, b7. But as you say, in global uh, league, uh, Prague was untouchable. Right, right. And this c1, but yeah, it, <clears throat> it kind of showed uh, Nihal's style of play very well. Mm -hmm. um, this was uh, the third menti we spoke about. Uh, then we go on to uh, the fourth one, uh, that is Leon. And I think uh, he, he has had a very, very interesting year. Uh, he gained 64 ELO points from 2558 to 2622. He won the bad Vureshofen tournament. He won the Hit Open. Then he won the Baku Open, third place at the Sparkasen tournament. So, <clears throat> a very steady year for him. Yes. Uh, Leon is very hard worker. Um, and I expect him also to continue this journey fast. He is um, about to... Um, I think soon he can target 2700. He's a little bit behind, uh, let's say, Nihal, but uh, he's working very hard and uh, we can look at some of his games as well. Yeah, we. I had uh, one game of his which I uh, was very much uh, impressed with and I liked a lot. This one um, uh, was against Pranit Bupalla. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And in the same tournament, uh, Nihal, uh, Leon had also beaten uh, Hans Niemann and was doing really well. And this was mm -hmm. the final round. And here, uh, with black, he, he played this very pretty move, E3. I know, it's a fantastic intermezzo. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder how much earlier he spotted it, but it's uh, really nice. Because the problem for knight takes C3 is queen C3 and there is no big blow. So maybe uh, yes. white is escaping. Yes. Yes. But after E3, it's uh, lovely. And and somehow, uh, you know, he, he could not even take this uh, because of, I guess, E. Maybe he takes F2. And if rook takes e3, I think knight takes e3 works. Because if you play rook takes d6 or something clever, mm. then I have uh, rook a1 check and knight f1 check. So, yeah. Very nice. And uh, of course, if takes, then queen takes c6 is hanging. So, yes. Wow. So, yeah, this was the. Leon and he's uh, moving up towards 2650. Um, mm -hmm. We then have um, Vaishali. And mm -hmm. uh, this year she hasn't gained rating. She's maintained it. By the way, just one quick uh, detour. Can you pull up uh, Raunak against Korobo from yesterday or day before? Oh, okay. I just want to point out the game. It's a very ah, nice. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, it's not like I have detailed commentary, but I just noticed it and I thought it's a nice and just castles, knight if I take take mm. rookie one and a four. So this is uh, this is also uh, like Raunak's uh, style. Yes, he he very likes much. to he play likes these kinds of things. So c five, f six, f four, knight g four. Bishop g6, maybe? Yeah, king f8, rook takes e6. Oh.
Bishop E8. I'm not even sure what's the point of Bishop E8, but anyway, he plays. It looks so, nice. Bro. It looks nice, as you say, yeah. Okay, so there was no point in came back, but anyways, even Bishop B2. And he's relying on this uh, trapped king and trapped rook on h6 and everything, so just a nice game. Yeah. Okay, let's move to Aishali. Yes. So, I thought this was just one. Yeah, very question. nice, very nice game. Yeah. Um, and Vaishali um, had a year which is, like in the first half, she lost rating. But then she gained back most of it mm -hmm. and now maintained her elo. She played the Gropri where she did well. She finished 7th out of 12. Uh, she mm -hmm. also beat 22600 plus players at Tata Steel Challengers. And she did very well at uh, the Turkish League where she win won the individual and team gold. Yes, I would say that uh, Vaishali, what stands out for me is her uh, tenacity. If you, I mean, in Vikanze, I honestly thought Maybe she was going to have too difficult a tournament. I wasn't sure how she would feel. But her attitude was, I'm learning, I'm having fun, and that's it. So she took it in good spirits. And uh, uh, you also see this in some of her games. I think you've picked a couple, and I picked two as well. Yeah. This uh, World Cup Classic uh, mm -hmm. against this French uh, girl, and then uh, the win against Muzichuk. Just to yeah. show how difficult she is in uh, lost positions. So we can have a quick look at that. Yeah, I'll just uh, pull up the Muzichuk game first. Uh, because mm -hmm. there she was down a lot of material, I guess. <clears throat> she's You're being very polite. She's totally <laughs> busted. She's, being, she's totally busted. I hear if Black plays, yeah. There is, I, I cannot imagine how it's possible to win this. It's just mathematically almost impossible. But she finds this uh, resource and then watch what she does. So already she has a draw, but right. she, oh, she, plays she then decides to try for a win. <laughs> so Check. And it's, yeah, and it's be check. Wow. Wait. So, uh, I thought this happened, it, it just happened, nothing special. But then during the World Cup, if you see her um, first match. Yeah. Oh, that one, I mean, she was like utterly uh, lost there. One second, I'll just... Yeah. Against Pauline Gouchard, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I, we should not spend too much time on this, uh, these two games, but I just wanted to highlight that uh, with Vaishali, it isn't over till she signs the score sheet. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so here... Uh, yeah. I think... No, Pauline is outplaying her, uh, outplayed her nicely, uh, took the pawn, everything. And I think by now, uh, it was... Gone. Uh, yes. Because every move it's attacking something. So she goes rook b8. Uh, rook d1 check, king h2, c1. Ah, no, queen c7 check. She even wins the rook. Yes. Yes. And then queen g4. And now there and... are no, no real threat. Okay, there is knight h6, but... Uh, first of all, instead of c1, a c1 is fine. Because it protects h6. <laughs> but here you can just, instead of... Uh, Oh, no, no, sorry. Queen is attacking b1. That's why you, instead of c1, if you play king h8, it resigns. Ah, you mean here? Here. Yeah, king h8. It can just, it resigns because white is a whole rook down already. Right. So, and bishop instead, c5, uh, you can make a queen. So, yes. Yes. But you do it in the other order and suddenly it's not at all easy because after takes, takes, knight h6. Right. King h7, knight f7. Suddenly it's not easy because when you go queen b6, you have this queen f5 trick. And knight f knight g5. What a <laughs> and then it's just mate in. She's uh she's able to not give up till the very end the fighting spirit and also tactically very strong, right? 
I don't know what to say, but it uh, uh, it is pretty. This game really took me by surprise. <laughs> I thought the, I thought she was completely gone, and then I found out she had won. So right, it's quite something. And also her uh, win against uh, Sethu Raman. Yeah. At this uh, Pagerness tournament, uh, mm-hmm. almost a year ago. Yeah, I have some, some very model moves here because uh, G4 is the way to play in this position. Okay. Uh, because you get this uh, H8 check trick. Um, I don't know if it's completely accurate. My impression should be that Black will still be able to defend. But uh, anyway, Setu, what did he do? Bishop F8 or Knight F8? He Bishop F8. Take. And then now, well, now already I'm not sure that it's uh, okay for Black. King E7 and then... Uh, Bishop G5. So now all the bishops yeah, it looks, cutting across. Uh, like a Morphe game now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Because suddenly C6 square is getting mm-hmm. in danger. I don't know if she should have started with the other knight. You mean start with knight, knight F4? Knight ED4. Ah, knight ED4. So that when you go to KC8, I have knight and a5 also. But anyway, knight bd4 is good. He goes rook c8. And and taking would mean, I guess, opening. Then knight takes d4. Ah, okay. Just... And then queen f4 is coming, so or e5 is coming, so it's getting more and harder and harder. So rook c8 here. Oh, this is majestic. No, knight f4. Basically saying, if you take on f4, I'll take on f4. If you take on d4, I'll take on knight d5 check. So, queen takes uh, e4. Go back one second. Yeah. If, instead of king e8, If rook takes c6, then she wants knight d5, right? Yes. <clears throat> and uh, for black, you can't go to d6 because of knight takes f6 check. You can't go to... Uh, why can't you go to e6? Maybe bishop c6. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Try it. Bishop c6. Knight takes d5. But just take on d7 and take on f8. Should that be okay? or Yes, maybe... but then I can play queen h1 check. And this may be not clear. Yeah. Queen c1, take, take, and then start pushing f7, f5, e4. Some chances. So... I can just check. Yeah, so just now you are right. Actually, after king, e6. king e6 is the best move. Ah, there. So, I mean, uh, rook takes c6 was perhaps the best move for uh, Setu. Hmm. He went king e8 in the game. She, in the end, finished it with a flourish. Yeah. Ah, and queen hit 6 h8. Beautiful. Yeah. Savita. And for Savita mm-hmm. this year has not been great in terms of rating. But uh, she became a WGM. She scored her first IM norm. Then also her second IM norm. And she also beat her first 2600 player of her chess career. So quite a few positives. Yes. And... Um... I think she shows consistently that she's able to raise her game. So hopefully she will now, and she's sort of consolidated in 2400 plus. Yes. So hopefully there's some movement forward soon. And she also uh, won the bronze medal at the World uh, Rapid Championship, which was actually a big... Uh, big That's result. right. Last year, I remember last year that was a very nice uh, Correct. result in uh, Astana, right? Yes. And um, for her, if you look at 
one of her games uh, against uh, Brian Smith. She yeah. just went like, I mean, her opponent sacrificed an exchange. But uh, at some point, like, Savita started attacking uh, heavily. G6. I suspect Knight F6 is just much better for Black. Right. But uh, always, once you have a pawn on g6 and queen on d5, there is some hope. <laughs> and she just took, yeah. So. Check. <laughs> oh. Beautiful. <laughs> very every attacking. move, some some unconnected piece is coming into life, and it's very nice to see. Yeah, yeah. This was <clears throat> very good aggressive. tactical reaction. Yeah, right. And uh, she joined uh, last year, I think, when we had the celebrations in Bangalore. She had just mm -hmm. joined the Waka uh, team, so now it's been a year that she's been there. Right. And then. Uh, the new entry into the Waka mentees is uh, Vantika. She has mm -hmm. reached from 2396 to 2435 in the last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. she scored her final IM norm, became an IM cross 2400. And the most important thing is she played some open tournaments this year, Fagerness, Menorca, BL, Abu Dhabi. And in all of them, she gained rating at 2400, which is very impressive. Right. Yes, shows a lot of consistency and, uh, you know, very positive sign. Did you, uh, like, when did she join Waka? Uh, because she wasn't there in last year. Well, she wasn't in the Menti group last year. Right. Uh, but we work with others as well, right? And uh, so she has been uh, interacting with us for quite some time, but... Uh, I felt that both with Savita and uh, Vantika, when they crossed 2400, then that's a nice threshold. Uh, so she's now a mentee. Right, right. And in her, uh, we've, we've chosen this one game where she beat Pranit, who's now a GM. Uh, mm -hmm. And this one was also, uh, this one was at the fact. Ah, she likes this. She likes these Catalan Ponsacs. Yes, yes. <laughs> so... Her style is quite positional, right? In a way, but also here it was positional, already... but uh, with this tactical basis. Like she chooses these openings. I remember the Catalan uh, comes up uh, fair amount on these, uh, also in these Slav setups. Um, anyway, knight f6 check, king h8, and then e4. In fact, after h6, if you just go back for a second, after h6. Maybe white should white can't play bishop c1 because of rook d1 check. Right. But can take rook and play bishop c1 or yes, maybe. So uh, maybe rook d6 is a nice move to throw in. <laughs> but then knight c4 is coming, no? Yeah, maybe. So maybe take, take and uh, just bishop c1 might be better here. Or, uh, no, f7 is angling, so maybe not take with the rooks. Yeah, rook d8, queen f7, so queen takes d8. Yeah. So here... Uh, so what is the... I can play rook d1 again. Yeah. Uh, and now if you move the queen, then I have bishop c1. Now uh, maybe that is the way. Yes. Uh, yes. And I'm just in time with bishop h6. Okay. So bishop takes, pawn takes, g6, she went in, rook g8, bishop a3. Ah, but you see the point of bishop a3, one sec. Uh, if you go rook d1, rook d1, c5, then I can play bishop c5, queen c5, rook d8. Oh, nice. 
and otherwise i'm threatening bishop f8 bishop g7 mate <laughs> so, yeah very pretty so very nice yeah Yeah. Ah, rook seven and resigns. But actually, there's quite some interesting moments. Just go back a few moves, mm. even more. Queen on uh, h6. Yeah. I mean, to me, the obvious move seems to be e5. Yeah. Because if I play rook d4, you can resign. But then the problem is black plays c5. Yes. And then the question arises, why does white play queen g5? And I think the answer is she wants to stop g5 by black. Ah, g5. I mean, I'm not convinced that the play is best, but at least you can see what she's aiming for. Yeah. She plays queen g5 to stop g5, and then you can play him uh, rook d3, g4, rook h3, oh. something like so, that. So Lower. if she but went she's rook d3, the there's g5. g5. Ah, okay. I think I think that might be it. Correct, correct. So um, e5, rook d3. Now, instead of queen e6, I don't know, maybe knight c4. g4. Knight d6, and maybe rook h3 is already resigned. Yes. Ah. So some nice control there. Mm. But you, you have to go through this slowly because I'm sure white has many winning moves, but uh, it's a good exercise. Uh, so she goes knight d7, now she goes back to e7 to stop uh, knight f6 and then resumes the threat of rook h3. So. I mean, I can't tell this quickly if uh, but, Black uh, didn't have a reputation or something. But no, the entire thing I just good control there. ran through the engine. It shows that all the moves were very accurate. She never lost the advantage. Mm. Which is so amazing. then very, very smooth game. You know? yeah. Fantastic game. Yeah, amazing. So, uh, we see those were the <clears throat> seven mentees of Waka. Uh, and also, there are six talents that uh, Vaka has uh, and they join in the sessions regularly, right? Uh, when they are happening. Yes. So they all uh, take part in the sessions and uh, obviously we'll try to, we try to help them as well. Right. Uh, so before they have some important tournament or something, we can do some, uh, an extra class or something like that to get them ready. Um, it's it's so hard to select from the group because we have so much talent now. But uh, I think there's a nice solution there. I think one of the biggest results was Divya winning the Tata Steel uh, Rapid right now ahead of Venjun, Humpy and everyone. Yes, the typical uh, last minute uh, <laughs> <Replacement>. winner. <laughs> right. And it happens very often, no? Fish that was a last minute winner and, and you know so not last minute he was replacing uh pal benko mm, true and and so on so there is it's a it's a kind of tradition the last last minute player wins the tournament amazing well vishi this is uh fantastic and you also have a very uh nice team <clears throat> mm -hmm. we saw we saw on twitter each of them giving their messages and uh, uh i think uh, all of them uh, have been doing a very consistent job of training the Indian youngsters. Yes. Um, I, I'm very happy with all of them. I, again, all personal uh, personal friends and uh, people I've interacted with much uh, over the years. So uh, it's nice to have this uh, group and uh, very good. I'm very happy with the group, both the youngsters and with the coaches and so on. And finally, I want to ask you that Vaka had certain aims. Uh, it has achieved them, let's say, before time because you had like a five-year time frame where you wanted a top 10 uh, and so on. But now it has been done in almost two and a half or close to three years. Um, how does that feel and what's next now? 
for uh, that happens? I think it shows me that it's so hard to make plans. <laughs> it's very easy to make a plan, but that's not how things work. They mm. surprise you at every level. Unexpected things happen. But that is part of uh, the fun in it. As you say, we set a four or five year target because that's what it, in 2020, when I was meeting them all, it seemed like a reasonable target. Got it. But uh, so many of them are... Uh, much stronger already and uh, now we have to set new goals while uh, helping others achieve these goals and so on so but it's good fun i'm uh, i'm quite happy with uh, the way things are going obviously and the can you know to have a top 10 player and a candidate <laughs> is a very nice bonus <laughs> absolutely and and this will keep on going right the new talent will keep joining in and the ones who are doing well will be supported would that continue? Yes, very much. I mean, the plan is still to continue with this and uh, to continue to work with them. Uh, we will work with Prag and Gukesh, obviously, but for new uh, targets. And uh, now they will start to play all the top tournaments. Yes. So, you know, tournaments like Vikings, Dusseldorf, and all these will become regular for them. But uh, equally, the candidates is a big chance. So very exciting. And uh, as Prague himself reminded in Kolkata, uh, we have some more chances of getting players in the candidates. So let's hope that happens. Yeah, for sure, Vishi. And congratulations. And, you know, we get a lot of emails from people saying that how to enroll for Vaka Academy. So <laughs> from, from people who are not, who are just beginning in chess, but of course this is for the best uh, in the world of Indian chess right now. And maybe it later on goes into, you know, training, uh, <laughs> Yes, the problem is the name Academy is slightly misleading. It's, right. as you know, structured differently. We're not, uh, uh, Westbridge sponsors everything. Correct. So we're not, uh, people don't have to pay to enter, but hopefully um, we can integrate well with the rest of uh, mm. the coaching system in India and that way everyone finds their slot. Correct. So. Well, thank you so much, Vishi, for your time. And it was a pleasure yeah. watching it. Thanks, sir. Always a pleasure. Bye.